Hi, welcome to White Data Fabric. In today's video, we will learn how you can create synthetic data from your database. For this, we will use our intuitive UI to generate in just a few clicks a new synthetic database. To start with, you need to connect your data source. For that, we will add the data set. This will allow me to select from a list of connectors. And in this case, because I want to work with a full database, I will select a connector for, of an RDBMS. Because my data is stored in a MySQL, that's the connector I'm going to choose. And for that, I just need afterwards to provide the credentials, has the username, password, host, port, of course, the database that I want to connect with, and give it a name. I'll test the connection. And this will allow me to ensure that my connector is definitely valid. So this means that the credentials that I have provided, they are correct. As soon as my connection is confirmed and successfully tested, of course, I'm already able to create my connector successfully. As you can see here, now all my tables, so my tables in schema are being read by the connector. And while I'm doing that, I'm going just to give it a name to my connector and wait for the tables. Or in case I want my uh, full schema to be used for the synthesis, I can also just move forward as all the tables will be selected. Can give some more details so I can later on search and find this data set based on my team interests. As you can see here, we have nine tables in our schema. We will select all of them and create a data set. As soon as uh, I have created, the data set will be computed. Um, and after it is completed, I can navigate throughout the schema. Now that our data source is ready to be used, let's quickly explore it. As you can see, we have nine tables. Uh, we have the definition of primary keys and foreign keys that was uh, extracted based on the schema of our database. And for each and every single table, we can explore uh, in more depth uh, the quality and profiling of the data. Now that we are uh, ensured that this is the information that we want to work with, we can also uh, revisit the PII, do some management in terms of the, the data and identification of privacy uh, preserving attributes that we want to keep in our data set and um, navigate throughout the different tables that are available to see what records do we have available. As soon as we are okay with all our data storage, we can now, in knowing that the, our data source is now ready, we can generate synthetic data. For that, we will need um, a destination connector if we don't want our original data uh, replaced. And that's exactly what I'm going to create now. So create, click and create connector. Can create a connector either to um, a blob storage or even um, to another RDBMS. I'll be selecting the same type of RDBMS, just a, a different uh, destination database and um, schema. Uh, give it a name. I won't test the connection now because I know uh, it's a valid connection. Create, click and create connector. And as soon as the connector is created, the destination connector or where I want to offload my synthetic data, uh, I'm going to jump into the synthetic data type. To start with, I just need to click create synthetic data, choose the data source of origin, in this case, uh, the Berka one. Given it's a multi-table um, data source, uh, I'll be prompt uh, with the schema just to revisit. I also have the ability to change the table types. Um, in terms of data type, I can consider either a tabular or a time series. This depends on the nature of the data that your table holds. Uh, in this case, because transactions evolve through time and you have a relation in time between the different records, I'm going to set this table as time series. I'll select 
the sort by key, which is just the date or how uh, the records are expected to be ordered, and the entities, which are accounts in this case. So the transactions uh, are grouped or reflected by account, and that's exactly what I'm going to say to the model. Afterwards, I can just revisit whether I want different masking types for uh, the different columns. As you can see, by default, all the primary keys are automatically uh, masked, but you can select how they are masked. For example, we have a lot of predefined values for the masking method, but you can just use a VGX, which is what I'm going to do. Set a pattern. And this will be the pattern of your generated primary keys, for example, when it comes to the client ID. It's also possible to add other um, uh, tables. For example, let's say for the client, we have the first names that we want to mask and we can select first name um, to be one of the values to mask or to replace uh, the observed values uh, uh, when generating the synthetic data. So we... afterwards, I just need to give a name, Berkestein, and select where my synthetic samples are expected to be saved. So all the synthetic data that is generated uh, and as many records as I request, they will be automatically written to a destination storage. In this case, I'm going to select the database uh, that I have created specifically for this purpose. So that I can just double check if everything is okay and save. As soon as I uh, click on save, I'll be my ha I'll be having my synthetic data generated training. The process can take a few minutes to hours. It will depend on the size of your schema uh, and volume of data. As you know, as soon as your synthesizer is trained, you can easily open it and check how your synthesis process went. So of course it was successful, the training finished, and we have here uh, also uh, good visibility in terms of referential integrity. This is important if you want to ensure that your synthetic database has exactly the same relations and they are respected uh, when it comes comparing to the original data. And that's exactly what you get here. So we have here a 100% quality in terms of referential integrity. Furthermore, you can also generate your synthetic records. And for that, of course, we have our synthetic samples being written to our destination database that we have set during the training process. You can also change it afterwards if you want. We don't need it. Uh, we don't want to have it changed, so we will keep it as it is. But as you can see, you can have or select a new connector for different samples that you generate. Uh, I'll say that I want a database with exactly the same size as the original data one. Uh, so we have 100% as the, the, the input to be provided here, but we can also uh, ask for a database with four times the size of the original one, which would uh, reflect in a 400%. But just for the purpose of this demo, I'll be uh, generating one with the exact same size. Well, this means that while the process is generating samples, it's also writing to your destination database. So you have a full complete uh, flow from reading to a data storage and writing your synthetic data to a destination storage. Uh, this would complete all the process, but in case you want to integrate your uh, multi-table synthesis into other systems or even uh, have it as an automated process through CI/CD. you can do it with our API. So you can use the API docs uh, as a way to call your already trained synthesizer um, in another system as again as an integrated API and you can uh, generate samples, retrain your synthesizer in case you need to have it refresh, or even get the samples, which means if you want to read the data um, from your database. I hope you have enjoyed and see you in the next video.